in this video team we're going to look at five items that uh, you really need to look at getting if you're going to step up from that um that hobbyist mushroom goer into something a little more um, substantial perhaps a small a small scale mushroom farming or you just want to be able to produce um, a lot more mushrooms per week for yourself um, now these items aren't super cheap but they're not super expensive either but they're really going to make your life a lot a lot easier um, and a lot cheaper um, they will save you money uh, in the long run um, after you have all these uh, and you're working with them all so um so come with me now and let's uh, go take a look this video is sponsored by the cavalier king charles dog breed they don't guard they don't fetch they are literally useless get yours today now the first item we're going to cover guys is um, probably one of the most important items you can um, get or build yourself if you're going to look at doing any sort of substantial mushroom growing and that is um, of course the flow hood which I'm standing right in front of here. Um, most of the mushroom growing uh, YouTube channels you'll see, you'll see the guys will be working in front of their flow hoods in, a, in quite a few different videos. They'll be um, mixing their spawn or making their substrate. Um, these are imperative to have, you absolutely want to get your hands on one. You can use um, other devices such as stillia boxes but you can't really do it for any meaningful quantity. They're more for playing around at home with, with, um, with cultures. They aren't too cheap. The fans are usually a few hundred and the panels are usually a few hundred depending on where you are. Stuff's a lot more expensive here in New Zealand than it is in let's say the USA. Um, and then just some wood to make your box with if you're crafty. Um, um, with some hammer, hammer and nails and a bit of glue. So um, get one of those together, it's going to save you time by less contamination um, and it's going to save you a lot less uh, wasted wastage um, um, with bags you're throwing out and time wastage as well. A bit of time now setting this up will save you a lot of time in the future. So that's my first item, uh, is a laminar flow hood. The second item that you need to look at getting if you're not using already for mushroom growing is a process controller or a PID controller. Now, PID controllers are brilliant because they'll control uh, something for you, a function for you, so you don't have to. So on the likes of mushroom growing, um, they're brilliant for controlling temperature or heat that's going to a device like a steriliser. Now you'll set these up for a specific temperature um, and they, they have a, a, a probe which runs off them, a, a temperature probe, and they will raise the device, they will power the device on until the probe detects that temperature, of which then they will flick the device on and off, on and off, to keep your uh, uh, device at that temperature. They are brilliant if you're using them for a steriliser, uh, because instead of just running that circuit open and having that uh, element constantly boiling, they can get your um, your sterilization barrel up to temperature and they can hold it there at, at more of a specific temperature instead of just having it uh, running on for 24 hours straight. Um, mine's actually on right now. It's um, at 86, it's detecting 86 degrees and it's going for 95 degrees. So um, that should be up, up to that temperature um, within sort of uh, 10 to 15 minutes, I would think. Now these will save you a lot of money, um, especially if you're not using one. Even if you're using something like gas to boil your boiler, um, where gas will just run constantly as well, these will only turn, turn the element on when needed, when it's detecting that temperature drop. So the main cost, the main saving for you is going to be cost with these. They are fairly easy to build um, on your own. Uh, this, this one here I've built. I've also got a second one inside, which I use to, um, to control the CO2. Um, and I've built both of those. You can also purchase them uh, ready-made. In the future, I would probably tend, on, tend to buy one that's ready-made, um, just because the cost of building them on your own can, I mean, you can get it cheaper, but a ready-made one really isn't that much more expensive, especially if it's been made in China or whatnot. Um, you can buy higher quality ones, a higher quality controller, this is a cheap controller, and the one I've used inside is actually a really high quality controller um, that I've got for my CO2 setup. If you want to make these, there's a few videos on YouTube of how to put them together. Um, I put this one together based off Eric Myers' video. So if you want to learn how to build one of these, go check his video out. Um, he's really informative on, on the subject himself. Um, and this was made, this is my very first one, I've had it for a long time now, and it's still uh, running without a hitch. The third item on my list, which I think is pretty essential if you're looking at um, uh, stepping up your great game to grow a lot more mushrooms, is a good um, fridge. What's a good fridge joke? Uh, 
there's not mushroom in your fridge inside. <laughs> um, now this here, which I use, is a commercial commercial fridge, um, and it's controlled by a, uh, a wee uh, process controller up the top here, so I can really dial this in, and um, I can get it to to be functioning around the specific temperature I want. Right now, it's it's um, 0 0.07 degrees in here, and it fluctuates between about point uh, about 1.6 to 0 0.7 degrees. Um, so it keeps uh, everything in there very, very cold. It's perfect for your uh, cultures, um, and it's perfect for your slants, and it's also perfect for um, uh, harvesting mushrooms. When you get your mushrooms, you, you throw them straight in there, and it'll crash your temperature really cold and, and really um, keep your produce fresher for longer. You can use uh, like residential fridges that you might have uh, in the house. You have to be careful with those guys because their temperature, they're not, they're not, it's great at keeping the fridge at one constant temperature. They may fluctuate up and down. You might even find that your previous fridges you've owned, they've accidentally frozen something at the back, and if that's going to be your culture plates and whatnot, and you start freezing them, uh, you're going to be in for a hard time. But um, commercial fridges like this are brilliant. If we open mine, you can see, open mine, and at the top here I've got all my plates sitting there, um, and at the back I've got a whole bunch of slants. Um, so this does the trick nicely. Now it's... Um, it's, it's pretty expensive for one this size, but double door one, but you can get smaller fridges um, which do the trick nicely for what you're after. Item number four. Is a good quality impulse sealer like what I have here. Now it's important to have a good quality impulse sealer to get a, a really tidy seal uh, on your uh, substrate bags after you have sterilized and inoculated them. It is that seal you're going to be relying on to keep out the contaminant and hold that bag shut. So um, investing a few dollars into one of these is great. This is, although it's a good quality one, it's, um, it doesn't have all the frills that a lot of them have. Some of them will have a magnetic part here, which actually holds it down for you, and then will release it automatically. Um, I'd recommend getting one of those if you, if you want to. They do save you a bit of time. And then um, you get some really huge ones which which you actually feed the bags underneath of. But um, for me right now, this one's good, although it's slightly short. I only have about five mils of playroom um, for an XLSB bag on each end. So I would have liked it a bit longer. But um, a good quality impulse sealer is uh, worth their weight in truffle. No doubt the best use for an impulse sealer is just to get a wee bag like this, get your missus's credit card, put it in there, and just seal it shut. That way she can't keep spending your hard-earned dollars on our frivolous things on the internet. And lastly, get your hands on a decent humidifier which is fit for purpose. You can either buy a purpose-made one like this, or you can build one like I've done, through parts purchased from the likes of Amazon. Both are highly reliable and both work really well. If you want something uh, more professional, you need to step up to a, uh, a high pressure pump and misting nozzles, which is uh, even superior to these two. But for stepping up from a uh, hobbyist grow to a small scale farming grow, uh, either of these methods uh, work brilliantly.